I bring greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God has been good to us and He has protected us all from the terrible pestilence and the terrible sickness and sorrow that we all are going through and He is faithful to keep protecting us from all of the attacks of the enemy. Praise be unto His holy name. For our meditation and devotion this month, uh, let's turn our Bibles to the Gospel of John chapter 1 verses 1 through 5. The Gospel of John chapter 1 verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, who was Jesus Christ, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God Himself. He continually existed in the beginning with God, and all things were made and came into existence through him, and without him not even one thing was made, and that has come into being. In him was life, and the power to bestow life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, and the darkness did not understand it, or overpower it, or appropriate it or absorb it and is unreceptive to it. Dearly beloved, let's focus on verse 4. In Jesus Christ there is life and the power to bestow life. There are two types of lives. The Bible teaches us this. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 46. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 46. However, the spiritual or the immortal life is not first, but the physical, the mortal life is first, then the spiritual life or immortal life comes. God is the giver of both lives, our earthly, physical, mortal lives, and also our spiritual, immortal, eternal life. He is the possessor of such lives and he is the giver of such lives. Today, it is going to help us as believers to know that in this world where everybody is panicking and are afraid of dying, God is the sustainer and the giver of all life. So you must be encouraged today and know that the one that in whom you have trusted and whom you have surrendered your life to is the sustainer, is the Elohim. He is the one that can prolong your life. He is the one that can bestow your life. He can protect your life and he can also grant you eternal life. What a wonderful God we serve. A God who is all-powerful and all-sufficient. And today, when we look to Him in our distress and in our fear, surely He will sustain us. Surely He will fill us with His joy and with His happiness. And we will not lament or be afraid or be sorrowful like the rest of the world is. Let's turn our scripture now to the book of Psalms, chapter 21. I want to remind you of King David, Psalms, chapter 21. Look at verse 4. He asked life of you, or from you, and you gave it to him, long life forever and forevermore. King David over here uh, tells us that he asked God for his life 
and God graciously granted that eternal life to him. Friends, we must remind ourselves that after this earthly life, there is another life waiting for us, a spiritual life, an eternal life, an immortal life where we live with God forever and ever. The Bible tells us, don't be afraid of anything that can destroy this body alone. But fear God who can destroy both your physical body and your soul. Let's not be afraid uh, in these difficult times as COVID-19 is, 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 is destroying everyone's earthly life. As believers, let us be encouraged that no matter what happens, I've got an eternal life that is waiting for me in the kingdom of God. David asked God for this life because at some point in David's life, I believe God revealed this aspect, this secret to him that there was life beyond his earthly life, beyond his role of being a king. There was another life that was waiting for him. And if he chose to believe and seek after that life, that God would graciously give that life to him. Let's also now turn to the book of First John. First John chapter 1. 1st John chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 I'm reading from uh, the Amplified Version I am writing about what existed from the beginning what we have heard and what we have seen with our eyes what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life the one who existed even before the beginning of the world Jesus Christ and the life and aspect of his being was manifested to us. And we have seen it as eyewitnesses and testify and declare to you all the eternal life who was already existed with the Father and was actually made visible to us, his followers. John over here writes that we have seen God. He, and God has revealed this aspect of his being that he is life, that he is eternal life. Be beloved, let us not be afraid today because the one in whom we have trusted, the one in whom we have placed our faith in is the sustainer of our earthly life and our eternal or spiritual life that is to come for us. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 says, It is appointed for man to live an earthly life, die, and then after that face judgment. John chapter 6 verse 48 says, I am the bread of life to all those who want this eternal life. Like David, we must cry out to God and we must ask God, Lord, give me this eternal life. Give me this aspect of your being because you are life, Lord. And when we ask God for eternal life, when we ask God to be partakers of that aspect of his being, which is life, God graciously gives that life to us. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ came into this world to save us. To save us from what? To save us from death. To save us from this this horrible earthly life of pain and suffering and the Bible says he gives this eternal life to everyone who believes in him who 
who walks in his righteousness, who walks in his ways. Let's read Proverbs chapter 12, verse 28. The book of Proverbs chapter 12, verse 28. What does it say? I'm reading again from uh, Amplified Version. This is what it says, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 28. In the way of righteousness is life, and in its pathway there is no death, but immortality, eternal life. Jesus Christ came into this world, and he offered this eternal life to everyone who believes in him and accepts him into their heart. And then he continues to lead these lives in the paths of righteousness, in his ways, in God's ways, in God's will and in God's plans. And when we all walk in these ways of righteousness, in the ways of God, eternal life is for us. Let's look at Psalms 23. This is what David uh, was talking about. Uh, Psalms 23. Psalms 23, verse 3. He refreshes and restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Beloved, have you accepted Jesus Christ into your heart today? Have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Are you walking in the ways of righteousness? by reading his word, meditating on his word, and walking in the leading of the Holy Spirit God. If you are, then don't be afraid. Eternal life is waiting for you after you finished living this earthly life. It is a great joy for believers to know that our life is not going to end in this world. We have a new kingdom that is coming, a kingdom where we will live as God's children and where righteousness and peace and justice will reign. That is what God is talking about in the book of John chapter 14 verse 6. Jesus Christ declares to us so there that He is the way. He is the real life, eternal life. And he is the real way. The Gospel of John chapter 6, verse 63. The Gospel of John chapter 6, verse 63. What does Jesus tell us over there? It is the Spirit, it is the Holy Spirit who gives life. The flesh conveys no benefit. It is of no account. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, meaning it provides you eternal life. You see, hidden in the scriptures of God are the secrets that give us this eternal life. They contain the secrets to the ways of God, the paths of God, which are righteousness. And so as believers, instead of fearing for our earthly life and, and looking at the world in fear and in, 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 in panic, we must look into God's word. Because in his words, there is life. There is peace. There is joy. It offers us the promise of eternal life. And as I read his words, the paths of righteousness are revealed to me. And as I walk in the paths of righteousness, eternal life is awaiting for me in the world to come. Dearly beloved, let our focus be on the life and the kingdom that is coming soon. 
Let us invest and store our riches in that kingdom. Let's look at the book of Titus. The book of Titus chapter 1. The book of Titus chapter 1. Verse 2. I'm reading again from the Amplified Version. Based on the hope and divine guarantee of eternal life, the life which God, who is ever truthful and without deceit, promised before the ages of time began, and the, at the appointed time has made known his word and revealed it as his message through preaching which was entrusted to me according to the command of God our Savior. In this perilous times, many servants of God, many true ministers of God have, have um, released several videos, Facebook videos, YouTube videos, preaching the word, preaching the word of eternal life. I believe this is God reaching out to this dying world and reminding them, yes, this world will end. This earthly life will end. But if you believe in my message, if you believe in my paths of righteousness, if you believe in my ways, Jesus Christ, then in those ways, righteousness is promised. Eternal life is promised to us. Do not waste your time, my brother and sister, this month in panicking and in worrying and in, in, in fearing for what might come. Be bold, be strong in the ways of God, in the ways of righteousness. Practice them on this earthly life because if we practiced the ways of God in this life, eternal life is promised to us. Luke chapter 21, let's go to the Gospel of Luke chapter 21. Gospel of Luke chapter 21. Let's read from verse 25 through verse 28. In the last days there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars, and on the earth there will be great distress and anguish among nations in perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea and the waves, people fainting from fear in expectation of the dreadful things coming on the world. For the very powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with, with power, subduing the nations and with great glory. Now when these things begin to occur, He's now addressing us, talking to us. Stand tall, children of God. Lift up your heads in joy, because the suffering of this earthly life has ended, and your redemption of an eternal life promised in heaven is drawing near. Cheer up, my brother and sister. God is coming soon. He is coming to, to take us with him into a kingdom that he has built for us. And in that kingdom, there will be great joy. Everyone that possesses that kingdom will be filled with his spirit, filled with his glory, and filled with his eternal life. Give your heart to God in this perilous time. Give your life to God. Embrace Jesus Christ into your heart as Lord and Savior. He will write your name in the book of life. Let us pray. Father, remember everyone that is calling out to you in these difficult times. As they open up their heart to you, enter into their heart. Become their Lord and Master. As you reveal to David the paths of righteousness, reveal to your children your paths, that we may all possess eternal life. 
and we may, and we all may be partakers of your rich promises in Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Thank you for hearing God's word. Like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more messages from the throne of our God. In Jesus' name, Amen.